Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this bubbly emoji effect. To draw an emoji on the sketch, we're actually going to be using it as a string of text instead of an image. And we can do that quite easily using a text function. And the text function takes in a total of three arguments. The first one is the text that we're going to write. So let's put in text and then don't forget to put in the quotation mark, and then the text, which is the emoji. And the second and the third argument are going to be the X and Y coordinate of the bottom left corner of the text or the emoji that we're going to draw. So let's put it, how about in the middle of the canvas? All right. And then now, if we want to change the size of the emoji, we can do that easily using a function called text size. And how about we set it at 30? And that's how we change the size of this emoji. Now that we know how to draw an emoji, how about we put it inside a class first so we can do it based on object-oriented programming. So come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, and click Create File. I'm going to call this file emoji.js. And before we start writing the class, let's go to index.html and come to this line of code here, copy and paste. Change the name here to the name of your new file. And this is how we integrate a new JavaScript file into the program. Let's go back to emoji.js. Let's start with the word class. I'm going to call this class emoji. All right, and then now inside the constructor function, what do we need? First, we need the X and Y location, right? And I'm actually going to set it as a vector, which is an object that can hold two values, X and Y coordinate. It can actually hold three, but we're going to use it to hold two. And I'm going to call this vector, this.post for position. And we can use a method within the vector class called create vector to create this vector object. And then where do we want to create it? We want to create it at X and Y location, which we're going to set as a parameter here. And then how about we write a method called display. And display basically is going to be how we display the text, right? So let's copy and paste this. And how about we actually change the 30 here to a variable called this.size. And then now, instead of width divided by two and then height divided by two, we want to put in the X coordinate of the post vector and the Y coordinate of the post vector. And then how about we set the emoji as a variable called T. And I'm going to just copy and paste this. And then we can replace this emoji here with the variable this.t. All right, let's start by just creating one emoji object. Let's go back to sketch.js. Now, how about we create a variable named emoji? And then inside setup, we want to set this variable to a new emoji object, right? So new emoji and the location that we want to put. How about we just put it at the same location at width divided by two and then height divided by two. And then inside draw, we just want to call the display method. And we just did the exact same thing, right? Because that's exactly what we did, but just move it inside a class. Next, we want to do two things. The first thing is that we want this emoji to be able to move. And the second one is that we want it to disappear over time. Let's start by moving it. I'm going to create another variable called this.vel for velocity, and it is going to also be a vector. And I'm going to set this initial value at 1 comma 1. So I want it to move in the right direction by one pixel and down by one pixel initially. And then I'm going to write another method called update. And update basically is going to update the position of this emoji. And what we want to do is so basically we want to add this change in the x direction to the position here and the change in the y direction to the position here. And because both this.vel and this.pose are vectors, we can do it easily by using a vector method called add to add the two vectors together. So what we want to do is that we want to update the position, right? So let's do this dot pose and then dot add. And what do we want to add? We want to add this dot vel vector. All right, and then now let's call this method here. So emoji dot update. Then now the emoji is moving to the right and down direction. But that's not the direction that we want because we want it to act like a bubble. So we want it to randomly 
move up. So how about we change this one and one to in the x direction, I want it to randomly move slightly to the left or to the right. So let's do negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And I want it to actually move up a little bit more intensely. So how about we do between negative 3 and negative 1. All right, let's try that. Okay, so as you can see, it moves up a little bit more than it moves to the right and left. Now, what we want to do next is that we want this emoji to disappear over time. So basically, we want the size to change or to decrease over time, right? And we can do that inside update. How about we do this dot size and then we just subtract it by, let's do by one. Hmm, you see that? It moves down and then at a certain point, it just stay at a specific size. So what is going on here? How about we just print out this dot size? So what's happening, it seems like, is that once the size hits zero, then it goes to a default size of something, right? And then that's why the emoji still appear at a certain size. So what we want to do is that we want to write a conditional statement that says, how about we say, if this dot size is less than or equals to one, right? Then we want to set a variable, this dot done to be equals to true. And then else, then we want to subtract it down. Okay, and then this dot done will be equals to false initially. And then what we want is that we want to only display the text when this dot done is equals to false. All right, and then now the emoji disappears. So if we put this as zero, would it work? All right, it, it doesn't work. So it seems like once the size equals to zero, that's when it goes to the default size. So let's put it at one. Now let's make it interactive by having it interact with the mouse. So instead of creating a new emoji in the middle of the canvas, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a conditional statement that says if mouse is pressed, so mouse is pressed is a built-in boolean variable that turns true when the mouse is pressed and returns false when the mouse is not pressed. So we're going to say that if mouse is pressed, then we want to actually add new objects into an array. So actually, let's change this emoji variable to an array, an empty array. And we can add an object inside an array using a function called push. So emojis dot push. And we want to push a new object, right? So new emoji object and at what X and Y location? At mouse X and mouse Y, right? And we also want to call the update and the display method on all of the emojis objects, right? And we can do that using a for loop that says for let I equals to zero, I less than. So the emoji array size will change over time as we press the mouse, right? So we can just called emojis.length, and this is going to give us the length of the emojis array. I++, and then let's just call these two methods here, emojis of I, emojis of I. All right. All right, so two things that I want to tweak. The first one is that right now, the mouse location is at the bottom left corner of the emoji, right? So I want it to be a little bit more centered. So let's go back to emoji.js. How about we draw this at this dot pose minus this dot size divided by two. Yeah. I can move it up too, but that way 
it's going to be on the face of the emoji so i'm actually going to keep it as is the second one is that i want more variety of the emojis so how about we set an array call emojis text and it is going to be a variety of emojis here and then if we go back to emoji.js here instead of this just one string of emoji we are going to randomize which emoji we're going to pick inside the emojis text array and we can do that by just using a random function and then put in the array that we want to pick a random value out of all right let's try that all right so there's one issue here if we were to run this over time so if i were to print emojis dot length you can see that even though the emojis disappear the length increase right increases over time and we don't actually want that for efficiency what we want is that we want to remove the objects that disappear over time right so how about instead of just setting this conditional statement here what we're going to do is that i'm going to delete this conditional statement so we're going to display all of the objects inside an array but now we're going to what we're going to do is that we're going to actually check that using the for loop again on all of the objects and we are going to check if emojis of i dot done is equals to true what we're going to do is that we're actually going to remove that object from the array and we can do that using a method called splice so let's do emojis dot splice and splice can actually take in arguments in multiple ways but what we're going to do is that we're going to only provide two arguments the first one is the index of the object that we want to remove so it's going to be the index of i right when i dot done equals to true and then the second one is we're going to provide one for the number of objects from that index that we want to remove so if we put one we're only removing the object of the index i so let's try this oh let's also print emojis dot length again So as you can see here, it becomes zero over time as the emoji disappear. So we're pretty much done with this, right? But I want to show you another way of using the mouse to interact with this. So right now we create the objects based on only when we press the mouse, right? What if we wanted to create the objects when we move the mouse instead? So I'm going to delete this. So we need to write a new conditional statement here. So instead of using this mouse is pressed built-in variable to determine whether we want to create new emoji objects, we're going to be using other built-in variables related to the mouse location. So the ones that we're going to be using is pmouse x and pmouse y, which is the previous mouse location. So the conditional statement that we're going to write is if p mouse x minus mouse x so if the previous mouse location compared with the mouse location right now is different then we want to create new objects so p mouse x minus mouse x can be a negative number or a positive number so i'm actually going to use another function called abs for absolute to turn it into a positive number is greater than zero meaning that if it's greater than zero so it has moved right or so we're going to do the same thing but for the y direction or if absolute value of p mouse y minus mouse y is greater than zero then we want to 
push new emoji objects at mouse X and mouse Y location. Let's try that. All right, so now the emoji objects are being created as I move my mouse. I'm not pressing anything right now. So this is pretty fun and you can actually change different things, right? Whether it be the velocity of how these emojis move or the size or how you want it to interact with the mouse. Right now, I show you two ways with moving the mouse or pressing the mouse. So give this one a try.